a family-run business was on the verge of potentially changing the sports industry forever. Within two years of the night Lonzo Ball was drafted number two overall, an enemy would change the brand forever. What if I told you the enemy was from within? The only people who really knew what happened are the people involved, and this will be a story with three sides. Alan Foster's, the Ball families, and the truth. Alan Foster entered into the Ball family's lives when his son became friends with Lonzo Ball in seventh grade and began training under LeVar Ball's tutelage around the same time. I got close to the family because over the years, my son was attending middle school with Lonzo. They befriended one another. LeVar Ball is the father of three phenom basketball players. Lonzo, LiAngelo, and LaMelo Ball. Even at a young age, it was clear that the boys were going to be very talented players with the potential to play collegiate ball. Get it, he can't throw it up in his face now. Melo, what you got, dunks? He would use basketball to strategically plot a course toward fame and stardom for his sons. Good shot, though. At the time, LeVar Ball was charging around $30 per week to train Alan Foster's kid. Little did LeVar and Alan know at the time that this relationship would soon become a public story of trust, betrayal, scandal, and claims of stolen money. It is unknown what Alan was doing as a career to earn money at this time. He was living in or around Chino Hills, California, which is how he got linked up with the Ball family. She pulled me aside and was like, I didn't know who Alan is. I'm like, I look like, what are you talking about? And then she was like, well, he had been locked up for like pretty much running a Ponzi scheme. He got like four million out of like 70 people. Allen had a criminal past of a seven year prison sentence after he pled guilty to one count of mail fraud and two counts of money laundering due to his role in a scheme that defrauded investors of $4 million. The Balls claim that they were not aware of his history. As the kids grew older, Allen and LeVar grew closer as friends. Close enough that while the kids were in high school, LeVar presented Allen with the opportunity to run a business together focused on building a brand centered around the Ball trio. Allen accepted and created Big Baller Brand LLC on November 14th, 2014. At this time, Lonzo was a junior in high school, LiAngelo was a sophomore in high school, and LaMelo was in eighth grade. Allen Foster saw the potential the three brothers had on the basketball court, but also the potential to create a brand for the trio off the court, potentially having their own shoe deal, merchandising, and a reality show. So I took, took a close look at the potential. Uh, I saw an opportunity if we started a brand early enough that we can gain the traction of, of people and followers to, to follow the story. So long story short, I, I ended up putting my own money into the brand. Alan Foster took a risk by bringing his own money to the table. At the time, it was far from a guarantee that the trio would create the buzz they did. Lonzo was seen as a can't-miss prospect, eventually committing to play at UCLA a year later. LiAngelo was seen as a good prospect, but was certainly benefiting from his brother's shine. LaMelo is the youngest and certainly carries a lot of hype with him in 2020 as the potential number one pick in next year's NBA draft, but he was only in middle school at the time. Big Baller Brand through LaVar and Tina would pay back the loan at 5% interest whenever Allen demanded. Because Allen funded Big Baller Brand with its initial seed money, he earned 33% ownership in the brand. He would use the Ball family name as branding for all LLCs associated with Big Baller Brand and be able to generate revenue for the business by marketing the Ball family boys. Allen started Big Baller Brand. He had the initial vision. Since Allen was able to create Big Baller Brand LLC and use the Ball name as his company name, he maintained a level of ownership that still exists today. As the hype around the Ball trio began to explode, Allen was behind the scenes orchestrating the moves we'd see a few years later as Lonzo entered into the NBA and the other Ball boys were generating hype on their own. Allen helped pay for Lonzo's living arrangements in college and assisted him with earning $80,000 by selling game-worn gear from UCLA's tournament run. Allen had become interwoven into the fabric of the Ball family. Along with Lonzo's success at UCLA, LiAngelo and LaMelo were thriving at Chino Hills High School. LiAngelo followed Lonzo's footsteps by committing to play basketball at UCLA, one of the most prestigious programs in NCAA history. A few years later, LaMelo would be following his two older brothers as he committed to play basketball at UCLA as well. 
Allen had struck gold. His initial investment into the family and Big Baller Brand LLC was surely about to pay off big time. With the second pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Lonzo Ball from UCLA. LeVar Ball made a prediction that his three boys would all play for the Lakers one day, and that dream was slowly starting to become a possible reality. With LeVar's marketing hype centered around his bold predictions, utmost confidence in his three kids playing in the NBA, and his attention-grabbing quotes, Big Baller Brand was becoming a mainstream, iconic brand. It wasn't iconic in the traditional sense, but iconic because everyone was talking about it. There were plenty of supporters, which included many current and ex-athletes and celebrities, and there were also many people who were clamoring for the brand to fail. Either way, people were following and talking about the Big Baller brand. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to the general public, Alan Foster was behind the scenes creating what would become one of the more interesting companies in the sports industry we may ever see in our lifetime. The common path for phenom basketball players exiting college is to sign a shoe deal with one of the major household name brand shoe companies, Nike, Adidas, Jordan Brand, New Balance. What Allen wanted to create with Big Baller Brand was the opportunity for the three ball boys to all have their own signature shoe deal upon entering the NBA. The Ball family business was exploding with Lonzo getting drafted by the Lakers at number two overall. The Big Baller Brand created the Z02 shoes, began a merchandising apparel line, and seemed to be gaining traction in the sports apparel industry. Whenever they hosted pop-up shops, the line would extend for a few hours with fans eagerly awaiting any opportunity to meet and take pictures with any member of the Ball family. With revenue beginning to pour in, Alan Foster wanted some form of payment to serve as a return on his initial investment. Alan was the mastermind behind the scenes of the operation and was building a brand that had its issues, but had enough of a cult-like following where you could see the brand becoming a legitimate and consistent multi-million dollar a year business. Allen helped orchestrate shoe deals for Lonzo and Leangelo. As Lamelo was making headline news for his success at Chino Hills High School, it appeared he would have his own shoe deal soon enough. Allen helped create the merchandising and apparel lines, and he even negotiated a seven-figure revenue deal with Facebook for the Ball and the Family reality TV show. $8.6 million is mentioned as the earnings for the show for the first four seasons found in Allen's countersuit to LeVar. It was appropriate for Allen to begin demanding that Big Baller Brand pay him money owed for his contributions to growing the brand into what it became. Lonzo Ball's accountant, Humble Lukanga, began raising suspicion as he noticed $1.5 million was missing from the Big Baller Brand's accounts. Lonzo Ball was shocked to find out that Alan Foster had a criminal past. LeVar Ball was shocked to find out that Alan Foster had a criminal past. They believed Alan Foster stole $1.5 million from right under their nose. Tell me if you've heard this story before. Famous athlete hires someone to manage their money, and the manager walks off with millions of dollars before anyone can figure out that the fraud took place. The Ball family extended their open arms to Alan Foster to be a part of their family. Lonzo considered Alan an uncle, LeVar considered Alan to be like a brother. They were extended family and business partners. But at one point, LeVar Ball considered me uh, a brother to him, and which by default, I was uh, like an uncle to Mello, Jello, and Lonzo. To the outside world, it looked like LeVar Ball's crazy claims of thinking Big Baller Brand could become a billion dollar company, his boys would all play for the Lakers, and his boys would all be stars in the NBA, was slowly coming closer to fruition than even his most ardent critics would admit. LeVar wanted you to think that Big Baller Brand was all his creation and that he was the mastermind behind the entire operation. LeVar bought a $6 million house in Chino Hills, turned it into an MTV crib style house that you'd expect a famous musician or movie producer to claim as their primary residence, and the driveway was full of exotic sports cars. There also didn't seem to be any financial concerns because LeVar was traveling across the globe regularly to spend time with Leangelo and Lamelo during their time playing in Lithuania, and Big Baller Brand created an entire basketball league that paid all players $3,000 a month. As Big Baller Brand was becoming mainstream, Lonzo signed a rookie contract for the Lakers in excess of $30 million, Leangelo and Lamelo were playing overseas, and appeared that both would have a shot at making an NBA roster. LeVar is a hype man, regularly appearing on daily sports TV segments to hype viewers on why his sons are going to be huge successes. Allen put LeVar on TV segments knowing that his boisterous personality would generate attention for Big Baller Brand. LeVar is not a businessman. LeVar left running the business to Allen. When the Ball family found out about the $1.5 million missing, they immediately cut ties with Alan Foster and went on spin control with the media. Lakers guard Lonzo Ball told ESPN he has severed ties with Big Baller brand co-founder Alan Foster over concerns about Foster's criminal past. 
and because Foster hasn't adequately accounted for the whereabouts of roughly a million and a half dollars. News reports began appearing all over the internet, especially on ESPN with Ramona Shelburne breaking the news. Lonzo made an appearance on LeBron James' show The Shop, LeVar made a couple of appearances on Sports Talk TV, and the family made claims that they had no idea that Alan Foster had a criminal past. Side note for those wanting to learn business, never hire a general business expert. Allen built an impressive brand centered around a once in 20 years type family where three boys all excelled at playing basketball. He knows that business, but that doesn't mean he knows yours. For the cost of having him mentor you, you'd be significantly better off by finding someone local to you who is excelling in whatever niche or industry you're looking to start a business in and learn from them. The cliche way is to offer free labor in return for learning the trade. Offering to work for free is the quickest way to learn a skill from a master. Go that route instead of paying someone multiple thousands of dollars to provide general business advice, especially if they live in a different city, state, or country like Alan does. General mentors, like Alan, just fill your head with inspirational quotes that you can read in 40% of the books in the entrepreneur section of your local bookstore. Specific mentors, aka mentors who are excelling in business that you want to learn, will provide actual steps to create and run the business that you'd like. Back to the episode. Alan clearly still holds ownership of the brand. Alan has started his own YouTube channel and could be seen regularly changing countries. This to me is a major red flag. Why would you be traveling the continent when your name is getting slandered all over the news in the United States about how you stole money from a famous athlete, especially given your criminal past? We know that Alan brought money to the table to start the brand. In my opinion, at some point he wanted to get paid since he was analyzing how much money the company was bringing in and the lifestyle afforded to the Ball family, specifically the parents. Around 2018 and 2019, he began demanding money as payment and LeVar didn't pay it. LeVar was too busy living lavishly and didn't want to share money from the business accounts. These demands were made multiple times with LeVar brushing Alan off stating that he was too busy to attend to that matter. In Alan's eyes, LeVar was the one taking funds from the business account to fund his lavish lifestyle. The way I see it, Alan became upset and began siphoning money away from the business to provide a monetary return on his initial investment. I find it odd that Alan wanted to run the business completely on cash. This allowed him to take money without anyone catching him before $1.5 million was missing. There is no rhyme or reason as to why he was operating solely off cash for the merchandise and shoe employees, vendors, and various business expenses. Given his criminal past, this raises a huge red flag to me. He claims that everyone wanted to be paid in cash, but I have a hard time believing all other businesses, the employees, and landlord would all want payments in cash. He claims he has documents and receipts in the warehouse for tax purposes, so I'm willing to believe that he didn't just outright take $1.5 million in cash one day like a thief would. What I believe to be the truth is that he was taking money throughout his time running Big Baller Brand as salary for his efforts. When it came time to file taxes, humble Lukanga, the accountant, could not account for $1.5 million and immediately thought Alan stole it like a gun-wielding robber digging into a cash register with sticky fingers. I have a feeling the money was slowly extracted from the business cash flow and reserves over a year-long time frame. This allowed Alan to take what he believed was his money without anyone catching on. But the one thing Alan does have is a lot of evidence on his side claiming that he's innocent of the claims being made against him. He has emails from an employee stating that Alan never took money. He has proof that he wanted the accountant, Humble Lukanga, to repeatedly visit the warehouse to ensure he had all income and expenses covered for tax purposes, and he claims Humble never did. Alan claims to have all receipts for all business expenses to account for the missing money. This is why Alan is countersuing the Ball family. I think Alan is stuck in the middle between being a charlatan thief and being a legitimately savvy businessman. There's no doubt in my mind that Alan knows how to build up a brand. The company certainly experienced growing pains and had its issues with delivering products, but the attention the company received in mainstream media, social media, and the amount of revenue produced is pretty admirable. In just a couple years, they grew from a dream to a global brand that offered Lonzo Ball the opportunity to be the first professional basketball player to enter into the NBA with his own signature shoe. Allen also helped create the JBA, which ran reasonably smoothly given that it was in its first year of operation. Allen also helped negotiate a seven-figure deal with Facebook to produce a reality TV show centered around the family. The man understands business, but I also think he wasn't completely honest with the family. There is no reason to run a company on all cash. This was planned before the first product was even created. 
In my opinion, Alan did this to offer himself the opportunity to take money if he ever felt the need to. And after months of demanding payment from LeVar and not receiving anything in return, his only retaliation was to take what he believed was his. If Alan's claims are to be believed that Big Baller Brand was a multi-million dollar a year company, then taking 1.5 million was in line with his ownership percentage of the company. But now Alan seems like a bitter ex-boyfriend who just got dumped by his version of a 10. He's using the Ball family to stir up drama for his YouTube channel to help funnel people into his business, which is selling education about running a business. I don't think he's guilty of all the claims being made against him, but his videos trying to create drama against the Ball family seems desperate and attention-seeking. The two quo qui fallacy is also called the appeal to hypocrisy because it distracts from the argument by pointing out hypocrisy in the opponent. This tactic doesn't solve the problem or prove one's point because even hypocrites can tell the truth. Focusing on the other person's hypocrisy is a diversionary tactic. In this way, using the two quo qui typically deflects criticism away from yourself by accusing the other person of the same problem or something comparable. This family is a big baller joke and follow my channel so I can show you why. An exclusive video every week exposing why Lonzo and LeVar lied about stolen money. Since nearly all of Allen's videos are aimed at deflecting blame to LeVar Ball as being the thief in this story, one could surmise that Allen is using the two quo qui fallacy as a diversionary tactic to avoid being seen as the guilty party. The only people who really knew what happened are the people involved and this will be a story with three sides. Alan Foster's, the Ball families, and the truth. And hopefully the general public will find out who is right and who is wrong following the conclusion of the lawsuits.